Morgan. I'm a product manager here at SIAPS. And my name is uh, Ben Botour. I work with SIAPS as well here with Morgan. We have another software mode that is calibrated to give you quantitative results. Maybe we could demonstrate that now. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. So if you want to get quantitative data, you know, we're, we're dealing with a very small spot size. We're testing 100 microns in diameter. Um, that's the laser spot size. Um, so you need to have a, a sample that is um, really a press pulp for Libs analysis, for quantitative analysis. Um, and you know, why are why is it important to be to be pressed? I guess maybe that's a, a common question that we get. If you're really looking for a whole rock analysis uh, with Libs and any any technique, um, you really have to kind of homogenize this whole thing. Um, if you want a representative measurement of what this whole thing is, right? Did I, yeah. did yeah. I say that right? So that's why these press pellets are so important. Um, if you're looking at a rock like that, you would um, crush it up, uh, pulverize it, homogenize it, um, and then once you've got that fine pulp, you can press it into a, a little uh, press pellet just like this. You know, this will give us a repeatable analysis. You know, we could shoot anywhere on this pellet and get the same result because it's all homogenized. And it's nice that we press it down because we give this nice, firm, solid surface for the laser to interact with. So that you know, if you tried to just shoot a shoot a powder and just go poof, and then you're you're left with a big crater there with, and uh, you're not going to get a good a good test that way. So Ben, there's another rock for you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know you like them, so. Uh, I want to see some results. Maybe we could sh shoot a few. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got um, we've got three samples here. These little these little pellets, and these are um, these are essentially the same rock as as what we shot earlier. This uh, pegmatite. So it's what we've done is taken this kind of rock, crushed it, pulverized it, and then pressed it with a sample press into this little pellet, and. Um, so it's it's essentially a, a kind of uh, you know a, a bulk representation of a representation of the bulk chemistry of this sample. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and shoot it. Um, going to Geochem. This is the uh, the Geochem app, and this is again this is our 901 Li. This is kind of the the streamlined you know libs for lithium only, um, limited spectral range, but. Uh, for those those of you who only care about lithium, it's it's a great option. Comes at a, a little lower price point as well. So we're going to go into our calibration. This is a pegmatite, so we're going to use our pegmatite calibration here. And um, you know, it's it's as easy as uh, putting the sample right up against the laser aperture right here. Line it up, pull the trigger, and so this sample is about 0.65. What is, the, what is that sample, by the way? This is, oh yes, so this is GTA uh, 14 is the sample name. It's a Geostats. Uh, they make standards, right. reference standards like so that's this. that's a certified reference material, right? So that's right. We know yeah. exactly what's in that one. So I'll shoot it a couple more times. Typically with lithium, what you want to do is uh, take, you know, three or four shots and you average that together. And that just further smooths out any sort of inhomogeneity within the sample as well. And I, I would suppose that kind of depends on what, how precise you need your results to be, right? If you're looking for a, maybe a rougher, quicker result, one shot's enough. But if you're really looking for, to optimize the accuracy, take a few shots and average them. Kind of exactly. Thing. Yeah. yeah. And so we got, you know, I took three shots. We got 0.55. And there's a function on this instrument that will calculate an average for you. So you just take three shots, calculates the average of those three. We got 0.675, and we got. 0.75. So if you average those together, you get about 0.65, which is right around what it is. Nice. That's pretty good. So I'll shoot one. This is uh, GTA 07. This is a um, this is kind of a, a lower concentration lithium sample. It's about 0. 0.05. So it's like 500 parts per million lithium. All right. Yeah. So we got 0. 0.075. So a little high. 0.066, so you know, a little high. We're in the in the right ballpark on these. Nice. Um, and we've got this one GTA 09, and this is uh, 
This one is uh, 0.5, I believe. So we're bang on right there. That's point. Oh, perfect. Yeah. 0.5. Nice. That's 0.5 again. Wow. So pretty good reputability on the, on that. So that's great. And um, I see you're only seeing lithium there, right? And that's because that's the 901 lithium. So it's a lithium only analyzer. That's right. As opposed to this this guy, the 903, which you could see. Uh, multi-elements, right? A lot of times we calibrate up to 20, 30 elements at a time, yeah. depending on, on the application. And um, so you'll not only get lithium, you'll get all the other elements as well. Right. Yeah, lithium, beryllium, you can get carbon with this instrument, sodium, um, and really LIBS, you know, as a sort of comparison to XRF, where LIBS is really kind of best is on the light elements. So if you picture the periodic table, top left corner, Libs has best sensitivity, and then as you go to the bottom right, it kind of, kind of gets lower sensitivity. Um, XRF is almost sort of an opposite relationship. You can't get the light elements, and, and you do really well on the, you know, the base metals and sort of heavy, you know, transition elements and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, gold pathfinders. So, so they really, you know, they do complement one another well. Great. Well, thanks, Ben. Thank you, Morgan. <laughs> Thank you.